Under Mr. Vance of Chairman, Ohio's recognition. Mr. Chairman, could I ask for personal privilege for 10 seconds? Yes, sir. Is that okay, J.D.? Um, one of my staff um, members and colleagues is leaving for the private sector, Mary Kirstner, and she's done an extraordinary job for the people of Louisiana and the American people. She's here today. I wanted to recognize her and thank her for her service. Thank, thank you, Senator Mr. Kennedy. Senator thank Vance of Ohio is right. Thank you, Senator Vance. Yeah, of course, and congrats, Mary, and uh, best wishes to you. Thank you for your service. Thanks to the to the chairman and the ranking member for having this this uh, important hearing, and thanks to the three witnesses for being with us today. Um, I, I wanted to focus a little bit on this question. You know, when, when we talk about fentanyl trafficking in particular, I, I worry a lot that you know we're always in in this body a few years behind what's actually going on in our country and. You know, I think back to you know my, my own very personal experience with uh, opioid addiction in my family, and you know, ten years ago, what everyone was talking about was prescription painkillers. But of course, ten years ago, prescription painkillers were sort of giving way to street heroin, and then five years ago, everyone was talking about street heroin, but heroin was kind of giving way to fentanyl. And now, we're of course, we're all talking about fentanyl, and we should, of course, it's extremely dangerous. It kills a lot of our fellow citizens, uh, and 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 orphans a lot of our kids. Uh, but I, I wonder what, whether we're missing the next thing, and I'd like us to maybe get ahead of the next thing. In, in particular, uh, I'm, I'm worried about, uh, and I, I'm, nitazines, or zines is sort of, it's, it's commonly called on the street. And Mr. Urban, I want to focus my questions towards you because, uh, as I understand it, uh, nitrazines are actually, or nitazines, I should say, are actually substantially more potent than fentanyl. And I've even talked to people um, just in the in the past few days, who've been able to order this stuff on the internet comes directly to their door, and they're dealing with a street drug that is substantially more powerful than what we give you know pregnant women in a hospital who are about to deliver a baby. This is extraordinarily potent stuff for people to just be able to order via mail. I I want to sort of start out just just there, Mr. Urban, and kind of understand. So, I, I, am I right to assume that um, when the CCP started cracking down on fentanyl under pressure from the Trump administration in 2018, 2019. Uh, we, we actually saw a pretty significant reduction in fentanyl coming into the country from the CCP. Is that correct? Uh, fentanyl coming in directly from mainland China via parcel, there was a significant reduction, yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, so here's, I guess, my question. Um, Maybe just give me a sense of what you're seeing when it comes to nitazines. How, how much have we seen a significant increase in this stuff? Are we seeing a larger number of people killed by this stuff? Like, what, what, what's going on? Are, are, you know, I, am I right to worry that nitazines are today what fentanyl was five years ago? I think you're right to worry. I think your 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 th thought process in terms of trying to get ahead of this and create speed to to identify the network and what they're distributing on the street, whether it be controlling it, whether it be uh, emergency scheduling, whatever DEA uh, suggests in terms of what they're seeing on the street, whether it be the streets of Kensington with with one of these zines, the the cartels, whether it's the Chinese chemical suppliers or the Mexican cartels themselves, will always look to exploit more deadly, more addictive substances within our country. So I think the, the, the plan you want to put into place and what you're suggesting is the ability to, to think ahead, to plan ahead, to negate it. Yep. So I'm going to ask a question, and recognizing you're, you're, uh, you work for the DEA uh, and are not a State Department official, so if you don't feel comfortable answering this question, let me know, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So when you think about like why people might deal drugs, so the obvious answer is greed, right? People want to make money. Uh, that's one reason why you might sell nitazines or fentanyl or anything else. But do you worry that there's a, a kind of a national security or a national competitive element to this? I mean, China's fundamentally a state-controlled economy. Do you think that they're aware of what's going on? Are we sort of witnessing something like a reverse opium war where they are, they are intentionally allowing this stuff to come into our country because it's killing, you know, 100, 120,000 people a year. And it's, 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 it's significantly impairing a lot more than that. So in, in general, when I was with the DEA and we focused on, on the China threat, I did not have insight within mainland China with the CCP and directly what you're saying. However, 
I do think they can dramatically increase their efforts to negate the precursors of chemicals and everything we're talking about with Chinese money laundering that's happening on WeChat. And that, that could happen and should happen, and it's not. So at, at the risk of going um, pretty far out there, I mean, given that China is a largely state-controlled economy, and it's not exactly easy to manufacture nitazines, I, I wonder if we're looking at something like a state sponsor of terrorism argument here, where they are explicitly permitting a weapon of mass destruction, a, a weapon of chemical warfare effectively to enter our country. Uh, of course, that assumes a lot, some of which I think we should be more careful about. But uh, I, I, I really think that we should be worried about how much China knows that it's destabilizing our country. It's killing our people. It's, of course, doing tremendous damage to our workforce. Um, and, and we ought to be looking into this and really exerting whatever diplomatic pressure we can uh, on the communist Chinese to stop this stuff. I appreciate your time, all of you. Uh, Mr. Urban, I appreciate your answer to my questions. I yield.